Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is a weekly chart of silver and uh, drawn in a couple of things here. First is this line. This line represents at $16. This represents my recollection and that's anecdotal so that's just my recollection but I have a pretty good memory and I've been watching this for a very long time. I've been stacking really actually I've been stacking silver since about the 1980s um, but seriously stacking silver since about this breakout here in 2003 now I initially started stacking the Silver Eagle and so that was one I watched very very closely I started buying the Silver Eagle when I was able to get them for around five or six bucks there was a point in time back when silver was around four bucks that the premium was like 20 percent you could get eagles for five bucks so you could get a monster box for about uh, 2,500 to 3,000 now when we got this first uh, top in the bull phase of silver that's when uh, the some of the premiums expanded uh, after this crash and uh, the premiums also expanded after this crash this line represents the price of silver eagles where it really has been since about 2006. Now, I didn't watch it that closely, but uh, I was buying during this period of time, and I can tell you it never really went below that. I know for a fact, because I watched it every day during the 2008 thing with Bear Stearns, uh, we, at this point, we had big shortages, just like we're starting to see the beginning of now. Now, we're not seeing the kind of shortages that we saw then, but we are starting to see the indications of shortages. Now, of course, this whole time frame here, there's no question that Eagles were above $16. But again, even with the smackdown that we've had, they're still around $19 or $20. So uh, although a lot of people have talked about silver is going to crash, silver is below in single digits, not the reality for what stackers have actually seen. Now, let's look at silver doctors. Um, this is uh, I let me just say personally I, I put a lot of stock in silver doctors back in the day when I first started doing this uh, there really was that there was no Chris Duane at that point um, there was myself SGT report and silver doctors we were pre pretty much the only ones that were doing that this this sort of thing and even zero hedge back in that day now you can go on zero hedge today and uh, half the people are like, well, I just stack more silver. But back in that day, and Zero Hedge didn't start until 2009. When I was talking about stacking silver, um, it was about as crazy as collecting bitcoins on Zero Hedge. You were universally mocked. Now uh, it's kind of a consensus. So, but Silver Doctors has been around since the beginning. I, uh, he's a stand-up guy. Uh, I've always just had the best experiences with him same with uh, Sean of SGT report these are people that I like and that I trust so when silver doctors comes out and there's a lot of people saying well I don't believe you or whatever when silver doctors comes out and says uh, this is what we're seeing in shortages I believe him because he uh, he has to order a large amounts he has to order through these intermediate dealers so he gets the scoop obviously if you're a buyer who moves a significant amount of physical silver then you're going to get the scoop because you're going to go in and want to buy it and and then you're going to find out if they're really going to deliver so let's read this wholesale silver shortage confirmed in lieu of metal and markets this week we bring readers confirmation that a wholesale silver shortage is in fact developing with SD Bullion's contacts with the nation's leading precious metal mints, wholesalers, authorized purchasers, and distributors, the latest evidence indicates that the wholesale silver shortage is worsening. U.S. Mint authorized purchases advised SD Bullion Thursday that silver eagle allocations have been substantially declining every week since sales resumed. Two weeks ago, the U.S. Mint made 1.4 million silver eagle coins available to authorized purchasers. Last week, only 1 million were made available, and SD Bullion was advised that this week the number declined an additional 20%. Further, U.S. Mint officials reportedly are advising authorized purchasers that they will begin making the switch 
to the 2016 Silver Eagle production in September. Now, if you remember last year, everybody was suspicious because they came in uh, in November and shut the thing down. But September, they jumped another two months. That is absolutely absurd. Drastically reducing the output of the 2015 coins as it takes less than a day to change out dies. In addition to the fact that in Previous years, the U.S. Mint has halted sales in the November-December time frame for the annual switchover. The evidence, in our opinion, points to the U.S. Mint having extreme difficulties in sourcing raw material for Silver Eagle coins. The exclusive distributor for the leading private mint 100-ounce silver bars in the U.S. advised SD Bullion on Thursday that the mint had been scheduled and promised to deliver 10,000 100-ounce bars on Wednesday, 1 million ounce of a single private mint production, but it was only able to deliver a little over 3,000 bars. The Royal Canadian Mint reportedly did not release a single one ounce maple leaf to any authorized purchasers, SD Bullion spoke to this week. This comes on the heels of a severe issue with the Royal Canadian Mint's production of 10 ounce silver bars. New orders for the Sunshine Mint one ounce rounds are shipping to dealers, distributors on a nine week delay nearly the end of October. The third largest U.S. wholesaler distributor of precious metals with 21 warehouses usually stocked to the rafters with bullion advised SD bullion that they have been cleaned out. Over the past 48 hours, nearly all the last remaining live products at U.S. wholesalers, higher premium retail products from World Mint such as Perth Mint, New Zealand Mint, Bank of New Mexico, Royal Mint, Australian Mint, Armenian Mint, and the Chinese Mint have virtually all been sold out at the wholesale level. Bullion mainstays such as Johnson Mathy and the RCM 100 ounce bars have gone no offer at several of the largest U.S. wholesaler distributors. Several weeks ago, the doc warned that we were looking at the potential of it for 2008 style premiums across the precious metal markets. If we have any further material weakness in the paper markets or If the U.S. Mint follows through on halting sales yet again in September for a 2016 switchover, that prediction is likely to become a reality. Now, let's think about the numbers here because there's just the numbers aren't that hard to calculate. You've got uh, 1.4 million available. We know what's been sold is in the millions. Um, We've got 10,000 100 ounce bars. So uh, 10,100 ounce bars is um, another million ounces there. So you've got a million here, a million there. You've got the Sunshine Mint, probably maybe a million. Uh, Now let's think about global silver supply. And of course we'll go to the Silver Institute who I've covered many times, don't necessarily trust them but uh, that's one of the only sources that we have. So what they tell us is, I'm gonna look at two things here. I'm gonna look at mine production, and I'm gonna look at demand, industrial fabrication. The reason why I'm just looking at those two is because the other ones I consider to be very shady numbers that I don't know. Um, Looking at some of the shady numbers in the series here, uh, this scrap number, uh, I just want you to note here it's dropping. You can see 255 in 2012, 192, then 168. So the scrap is dropping off. Net government sales is dropping off. Uh, governments are out of silver. Net hedging, don't trust the number at all. So the total supply is supposed to be about 1 to 1.1 billion. I don't know if it is or isn't. Uh, so the main figure I'm going to go by is this 877. 877 million ounces. That's the, that's the number for 2014. That's mine production. Now the demand number that I want to look at here is industrial fabrication. Uh, Very interesting that industrial fabrication number has fallen. Uh, That's surprising to me. It hasn't had a substantial rebound. But nevertheless, industrial fabrication is at about 600 million ounces. So the difference between industrial fabrication and mine production is only 277 million ounces. This is for the entire world. 277 million ounces times the current price, which is 15, 
is about four billion dollars. So four billion dollars is the value of the entire investment uh, uh, silver in a year. So think about that one million here, one million there, and you can see how that uh, 277 million can be used up very, very quickly. It, when you think about those numbers, then it makes sense that you have things like allocation, you have things like rationing, you have things like delays. These are things that happen in markets when the people involved are dishonest and they have an ulterior motive to not let prices rise and not let markets clear. That's the situation that we're in. And uh, I can't really prove it. There's no way to prove it. You just have to think about it and you'll realize that it's the case. So I want to show you a chart here. This is going to be relevant because of the latest information of what's coming and going in China with uh, some people speculating that devaluations will continue. This is a chart from goldbroker.com where you can actually get gold and silver in any currency that you pick. So I picked uh, silver in the Chinese Yuan. And so this is gonna be one we're gonna wanna watch going forward because uh, if the Chinese currency continues to devalue or if silver continues to rise, we could potentially see an explosion in this chart. And considering that China is probably going to be the most important economy going forward, in my opinion, for the next 80 years, then the price of silver in the Chinese Yuan is, is a very big thing. Now let's talk briefly about the 2016 year of the monkey. Now, the Lunar Series Calendar, um, I've already talked about. You can see the Chinese symbol here. Uh, I've already talked about the importance of this Lunar Series coin. I think most of you who bought them, along with me, have seen the performance of these coins. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's spectacular. Uh, a lot of us have doubled our money in just two years on a lot of these coins. So this is the coin for next year, and I'm kind of uh, halfway on this one. I kind of like it, but then again, I don't. Uh, when it first came out, uh, people were talking about how it kind of looks like Planet of the Apes. Jennifer posted some pictures of some monkeys from uh, Macaw, and uh, th these actually look very close to the real thing. So uh, I'm okay with the coin, but then again, as I pointed out before, it doesn't really matter what I think about the coin. Uh, for me, the horse, I thought, you know, buy as many as you can possibly buy that coin. It's the most beautiful coin I've ever seen come out of the Perth Mint. But it necessarily it hasn't necessarily performed any better than the other coins. So you can't just go by my opinion or your opinion of what the coin looks like. There are other factors and how many people will stack and uh, all kinds of other things going into it. So we're going to be watching this coin for it to be released. And the big issue, of course, is going to be how many are pre-ordered by outfits, the main four, Gainesville, Provident, uh, uh, JM, Bullion, and Atmax. How many are they gonna order? That's the first thing that we wanna see when this coin comes out and is available. The next thing we wanna see is what price the one ounce coin comes out at. That's gonna be the thing that uh, is the big issue because uh, the ones they think are gonna be very, very successful, they come out with an incredible premium. The absolute worst of the bunch was the, was the Dragon, which never came down to an affordable price on the one ounce coin. Of course, that's why we started moving into the half ounce and the two ounce. Now, we have never seen an explosive premium in the half ounce or the two ounce coin. They pretty much stay around that 299 to 399, 499 an ounce above spot. We've never seen a two ounce coin come out at say $10 above spot per ounce, and we've never seen a half ounce coin come out at say five or $10 uh, per ounce above spot. So we wanna see how this coin comes out. It's gonna be very interesting. I think the, the Perth Mint has been, just like the other mints kind of stingy, slow, allocating, 
all the things that you do when you're really you're selling off your national asset at below its value. So that's what we want to we want to watch with the the monkey series coming out. Now, the as I said, the lunar series is a 12-year cycle and you can see the last monkey series that we had was back in 2004. Um, this is just kind of a brief snapshot of where we are with that coin. I thought it would be higher. You can see the range is very, very wide. Um, I put less importance on buy it now prices and I put more importance on auction prices. Uh, buy it now is just somebody who's willing to cough up some cash because they want the coin. They're collectors or whatever. So you can see 70 bucks for the buy it nows. The low on the bids, $51 and 20 bids. Um, here's a buy it now at 113. That's a weird outlier. Here's 15 bids at $62. Here's 21 bids. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's a half ounce. That won't count. So we're looking at anywhere from $55 to $65 for this one ounce monkey. Um, of course, when you think about the prices of silver back in 2004, and again, I've mentioned this before, the, the collectors of Perth Lunar Series don't seem to be willing to sell it below what it came out for. So obviously the highest priced ones are going to be the ones they were selling around that spike up to $50 in uh, May of 2011. Whereas this coin, 2004, you can see uh, silver prices back in 2004 were all the way down here. And actually you could have been buying that coin in 2003. So let's say late 2003, the beginning of this bull market, we're talking we had a $4.80 silver price you are probably picking this coin up for $6. So actually this coin is a 10 bagger. And uh, that's a pretty good return for the course of 10 years. Uh, so again, we're gonna watch this monkey coming out. Uh, that's the next one. And uh, we wanna see how they stock it, where the one ounce is priced and how many are available. And we'll talk to you next time.